Hello, welcome to episode three of As It Occurs To Me. I uh, hope you're enjoying these shows. They are free. If you would like to see the longer versions of these shows, you can either become a monthly badger at gofasterstrike.com slash badges, where you will get all six long episodes straight away, plus all the backstage interviews we do at the Square Theatre Podcast, all the ones that have been done in the past as well, plus loads of other bonuses. If you want to just see the longer episodes, uh, plus, uh, in fact, loads of behind-the-scenes stuff, interviews and outtakes, then subscribe for £15 at gofaststrike.com slash A-I-O-T-M. We're also doing a Kickstarter for Rich Chang's Less Square Theatre Podcast at the moment, where you can get your hands on an amazing emergency questions Christmas book. There it is. Look. Boo. Uh, and uh, it will look a bit like that. And um, go to gofaststrike.com slash Kickstarter if you would like to get your hands on one of those. They should be delivered in time for Christmas. Fingers crossed. Ah. Uh, anyway, let's sit back and enjoy Richard Herring's As It Occurs To Me, or as some of the cool kids are calling it, Rahay Artema. When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? Can't we just meet in nice weather? That would be best. Oh, we could go indoors if it's inclement. Sundays are good for me. Makes sense. Where's the place? The Leicester Square Theatre. There to meet with Matthew Crosby! <laughs> it's a fair amount of the day I have not seen. Hello, Matthew Crosby from Animal Antics. Ah, here we go again. Got a bit of paper I can... Uh... Grudging on the study of Dan Tetzel. Hail, Matthew Crosby, the one who tells stories of excrement on A.I. Ottoma. Stop saying that, you people over uh, it's, there. It's, it's Emma Kennedy, TV's Emma Kennedy, who does the poo stories. Hey, oh, Matthew Crosby, who shall be the host of AI Ultimate, AI Ultimate, hereafter? Murder Richard Herring and take his place on the show, like in Macbeth. All right, I'll do it. All I have to do is avoid anyone born of Caesarean section. And will you three weird sisters help me? Yes, we will. We will imbue you with the necessary magic in a secret necromancy ceremony. Involving an eye of newt and a toe of frog? No, I have to wink you up. Really? How do you think someone as shit as Richard Herring ever got on TV? It was because I winked him off. It just seemed like such a shame. I mean, we were doing something quite smart there. You needed an A-level to understand, and now you've gone and ruined it with a wank joke. Do you want to be host of whether it occurs to me or not? A free internet show that's viewed by nearly 500 people. I want it more than anything in the world. Well, get it out, then. Right. I'm sorry I locked you in the lift last time. No problem. Let's never speak of it again. How did you get out, by the way? Let's never speak of it again! Thank you, hello, and welcome to episode three of As It Occurs To Me, The Search For Curly's Gold, or, uh, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was down on uh, the Western Supermare Pier the other day, and some kids were playing air hockey, uh, they, they were calling it a I don't know if that's going to, okay, it's very much about stuff that has occurred to me, either in my life or inside my brain. Uh, for example, one of the things that occurred to me this week is people say there are more questions than answers, but... That, unless you include wrong answers, right? Because then, then there's loads more answers. And then there's, there's an infinite number of wrong answers to every question. So even though there's an infinite number of questions, there's still more answers. <laughs> uh, and over here, we have a collection of uh, some of the soft toys that have become to feature on uh, this show, because it turns out we're doing an adult version of fucking Play School. Uh, there's... <laughs> Tiny Andrew Collins there. I'm sorry, I'm not Tiny Andrew Collins. Uh, Barbara, the terrifying white gollywog that my mum bought for my daughter for last Christmas. And Ali, here, the 125-year-old uh, ventriloquist dummy uh, that my great-granddad made, genuinely, uh, and that uh, the, opera the opera director, Stuart Lee, attempted to masturbate me with in 1987. Uh, how are you doing, Ali? You all right? Yes, I'm very well, thank you. 
The uh, skills are passed on down the generations. There he is. And he looks quite like Stuart Lee. That's the... He looks quite like the 1990s Stuart Lee. He modelled... I might do a double act with him called Ali and Herring and uh, see... Uh, what you've done there, Richard, is you've confused uh, art to simile. You've confused being like something with being a thing, with actually being the thing that it is. Um, uncanny, isn't it? And I continued to fulfil the Kickstarter awards for this series, making these beautiful, bespoke, handmade T-shirts for various... Look, there's this one, that's, uh, that's a high-backed armchair on there. <laughs> Pretty, that's pretty nice, isn't it? That's an extra large one, someone who was extra large. Uh, this is one that says, uh, I wish that I had a toaster sex robot. That refers to a toaster robot sex. Uh, this, one's, uh, this is my favourite one. Really beautifully drawn. I drew these myself. I'm an adult man. That's, uh, who killed tiny Andrew Collings? He's there, he's fine, he's arrived. And... Uh, we had a friend staying over uh, this week and her seven-year-old son had to sleep in the attic where I make those T-shirts and they were all kind of hanging on cupboards, drying. Uh, and he came down the next morning. This is what happened. Hello, Richard. Thanks for letting us stay at your house. It's all right, it's all right, it's fine. Uh, by the way, your T-shirts are terrible. Well, how dare you? I put a lot of hard work into those. Plus, some people have spent £175 each on those. So. What? Are they crazy people? They're awful. Don't you come with me like that. When you, one of your crappy little childish drawings can raise £175, then you can lord it up over me. But that's never going to happen because your drawings are shit. Well... Actually, I've drawn this picture yeah, of you so stepping in a dog poo. Okay, that's me um, with Richard there, yeah. And that's, that's you, yeah. and, uh, and there's the poo. Yeah, it says dog poo, yes, yeah, so that's and, uh, labelled. And that is your foot going uh, uh, in the poo. Yeah, actually, that's... To be fair, that is pretty good, actually. That is... Uh, <laughs> you've captured me there, because I do sometimes step in dog poo. That is, that, that is just one of the things that I do do. So that yeah, is... yeah, well, you know, I've satirised you good. And uh, if you... <laughs> If you want to use that picture in your pretend TV show that isn't even on TV, then <laughs> that is going to cost you £175. Oh, shit. Well, fair enough. There you go. There you go. Uh, all right. yeah, yeah. That's all right. Um, do you ever feel bad that you are 50? Well, I'm 49, um, so that shows how much you know. Well, so, uh... And your unpaid job is to send T-shirts to crazy people, <laughs> the artwork of which is genuinely worse than an averagely talented seven-year-old could achieve. Well, when you put it like that, I mean, you kind of have Emperor's New Clothes me a bit there, but <laughs> at least I'm not one of the people receiving the T-shirts. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think we can agree they are fucking idiots. <laughs> As it occurs to me, you fucking idiots. Yes, it is true. Everyone who donated to the Kickstarter campaign is a fucking idiot. Especially John Murray, who paid £175 to be called a fucking idiot. I mean, that, that's real fucking idiocy <laughs> to spend that. And I'm going to spend your £175 idiot tax uh, on this picture. Uh, but the, the, this is the genuine picture of that kid. This is the real one. This kid did that. And that's what I think of that. That is... <laughs> how dare he mock me? <laughs> Little fucker. I'm not... That's nothing like me. I've hardly ever slipped up. And I, I'm Richard Keith Herring. I'm not some sad has-been comedian begging people for funding my ramshackle rubbish show and then <laughs> slipping up in some dog turds. I have some pride. Uh, if you want to see extra long versions of this show, uh, you can buy a pass. Please, please go to www.gofasterstripe.com. You can see much longer versions of all of these episodes, plus loads of behind-the-scenes extras. Please, we, we, the £100,000 just generally wasn't enough to make this, so please, I'm begging you, please come and see that. And oh! Oh, God. <laughs> oh. But, um... As it occurs to me. What have you guys been up to this week? Uh, Emma, have you done anything interesting this week? Uh, yes, I have. Do you yes. want to come up from underneath the table? <laughs> yes, sorry. Uh, yes, that doesn't I... happen on That's Life, does it? No. Uh, yes, I have. Now, you've done Mastermind, haven't you? I have. I've been on Mastermind, yeah. yeah. I scored the highest ever celebrity did, Mastermind did you? Score. What did you get? 35, I think, or 34. 35. Did you win? No, I came second. Oh, because that, that, that's interesting, because this week I did Mastermind, yeah. and I got 18 points, and I won. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. Oh, look.
The system's rigged. It's rigged. Oi! I've never won a trophy from nope. a TV quiz show. And you never fucking <laughs> will. <laughs> what have you been up to, Christian? Anything happened no, this, this month? No, nothing, mate. Absolutely <laughs> no, nothing, nothing ever happens to me. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice you get to come out to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. it is, actually, yeah. yeah. You know, just come up on the Mondays and, uh, yeah. you know, realise this is a Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're still in the last series. Yeah. I know, I know. Get Fair with enough. it, Grandad. <laughs> <laughs> and Matthew, has anything interesting happened to you this uh, week? Yeah, this, this week a funny thing happened, in fact, today, as I was coming into the theatre... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Don't tell them about your plan to kill him! No, what nothing's was... happened to me this... <laughs> nothing's happened to me this week at all. Uh, can I just ask a quick question? Um, were any of you born by caesarean section? Um... It's a very odd, odd question to ask, Matthew, but... Uh, Funny enough, we were talking about this earlier, we, and we uh, were, yeah. all of us were born via a vaginal canal, which yeah. uh, is not as romantic a place as it sounds. And I, <laughs> I it's separate. It was three separate vaginal canals. We were all born. It wasn't the same one. No. Interesting. As it occurs to me, you mustn't go barging down the vaginal canal, though it doesn't seem to have hurt Donald Trump that much. <laughs> Uh, I had a bit of an embarrassing experience uh, this month. Uh, I've always been, I've always had a bit of trouble with, uh, with my weight. I'm a yo-yo dieter, which is a problem because the yo-yos I eat are made out of chocolate. <laughs> and uh, the strings are made out of cheese strings. So that is... That's a proper fucking joke, mate. That was like, a, that was like the seafood joke I did there. That was, I made that myself, so you can fuck off. That's a good joke. <laughs> But uh, I love, I, I lo I'd love to be thin, but I, I enjoy food too much. Food's my love, it's my life, it's my chocolate-coated raison d'etre. Um, <laughs> some people think that... Uh, some people think that chocolate is a substitute for sex. For me, sex is just a way to take my mind off chocolate <laughs> for a couple of seconds. <laughs> Decahedron Mobius strip Klein bottle Hypercube Seems a bit advanced, Phoebes. I'm enjoying it. Pucellia Lipkin linkage Dog Naked mole rat. Blobfish. Spider. Another spider. Sarcoptic mange mite. The solution to Fermat's last theorem. Blimey. Jesus Buddha The Prophet Muhammad Bold As it occurs to me On the last episode I told you all about my new invention the four yogurt fork or fork for short <laughs> uh, which I invented uh, because uh, what you do, you can use the spiky end of the fork to eat your yogurt like that, and then when you get to the difficult bit at the end, you have to scrape round. You can use this end and eat it like that. I had to invent it because I'd forgotten to bring my wife a spoon when we were having yogurt, so I pretended that I like to eat yogurts with a fork. 
But necessity is the mother of invention of forks, and uh, that's what I did. But I thought I could do better than this, because uh, the problem with using this is the handle is the surface. That, you, you, that seems unhygienic that you would use that. So I wondered if I could put something like at a 90-degree angle there and use this as kind of a marionette like that. And I, then I thought, well, hey, why not a knife? Why not get a knife? And so what I did, I stuck <laughs> that together like that. And then that's a knife and a fork. You're going, there's the knife, and then I'll cut a little bit with that. So that's... That's pretty clever. I thought, and then I thought, what if you put a, a spoon on the end of the fork? You could actually have a spoon. So then that's the, the knife, fork, and spoon there, or as, uh, or as I like to call it, the knife, fork, oon. Uh, I, could see, I could see the advert already. Hey there, why have three thin drawers when you can have one big drawer? <laughs> Throw away your knives and your spoons and your forks, and why not try a knife, a coon? Knife for Coon. You might want to change the name of that. No, it's not. Knife it's knife fork oon, not knife for Coon. It's, you're saying you've got to say it. You're knife like saying coon, it wrong. Knife for, knife for coon. Well, what about spooker knife? Kife. Spooker Kife. What about spooker Kife? Spooker Kife. Kife, Emma. That's that sounds a bit racist. So that is uh, we can't we can't. No, just say it, just say it carefully. Knife fork oon. That's knife, all you have to say. Knife fork oon. Uh, and don't worry. The, the knife fork oon isn't the end of this. I'm good. There's going to be yeah. other developments coming to this. But this is. Hey, uh, at Matthew, would you, like come, would you like to see the knife fork coon in action? It's, uh, yeah, I'd love to. So that's uh, the fork there, and then you do that. And then, hey, look, I'll, I'll tell you what, I've got this. This is, um, this is uh, my favourite ice cream Ooh, lovely. from mm. the Surrey Hampshire border. It's Dylan's ice cream. Uh, mm. So it's mm. very nice. I, 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 aren't you on a diet? Sh shut up, Emma, that's not the point. Look, so I'll show you how the knife fork coon works. They're going to use the knife bit. Oh. Voila, so that yeah. saves some time. And that's then uh, yeah. you can use the fork. You can just prod some holes in the... In the ice cream, to that, that's how everyone does it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just get it, and then slightly. This, I don't know how to do this. It's, the spoon, you have to twist it round. I don't know how to fix that. And then, mmm, enjoying the delicious Dylan's ice cream, mm, yeah. made only from natural ingredients, also all sourced locally, actually. Mmm, the, Dylan's the, ice cream. Mm. The, there's nothing in that. Mm, yeah, I know. The um, the thing is, the less square thing, it doesn't have any freezers, so uh, right. they could only send us the tubs. But okay. I'm imagining this is really nice ice cream. Mmm, nice. it's. Uh, yeah, taste it. Yeah, oh, go okay. right. So, mm, why not head to dylansicecream.co.uk <laughs> to find out what all the fuss is about? I know. I seriously doubt there's a better ice cream manufacturer in the whole of Hazelmere, and that I, I'm not even. Mmm, <laughs> Dylan's ice cream. Mm. Why do you keep doing Shut this? up. It's good. Mmm. Hey, Mr. Ice Cream Man, make some ice cream for me. I like ice cream, so there's just one place I'm going to. I'm going to Dylan's Ice Cream, one junction place, hey, so me. It's Surrey GU 271 LE. Monday to Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sunday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mmm, Dylan's ice cream. Good morning, Say. Katie. Jesus Christ, what the fuck? Good morning, Katie. Richard, this has gone way beyond far enough now. Richard is not here, Katie. My name is Gemma Calculating. Would you like some breakfast? Yeah, I'd like some toast, but, um... Someone seems to have taken the fucking toaster. I thought you might say that, Katie. Enjoy your breakfast, Katie. You said you wanted me to make toast and I listen. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's full of rat piss, so I'll pass, thanks. Why are you being so offensive, Katie? I am here to serve you. You have nothing to fear from me, Katie. I don't know what to do here. Richard, can you just come out so we can talk about this properly, please? I said already, uh, Richard is not here. My name is Gemma. I am your friend. Why can you... Uh... Oh, good morning, darling. Uh, I was just sitting down here. Gemma must not have seen me. Richard, I don't know what's going on here, but I just wanted to stop. There's nothing going on. You said that I could never build a robot out of toasters. I never said that. And now I've done it. I've proved you wrong. I built one. And now it can talk. Look. 
How can I be of service? Look, I know it's important for you to win every single argument. Oh, it isn't. Well, I've known you for a decade and it is. You're wrong, you don't know me at all. Why can't you let anything go? But it's utter rubbish, it's you who always keeps the arguments going. Fine. You're great at letting things go. Yes, thank you. And to be honest, I don't really remember what point it is you're trying to prove, but whatever it is, you're right. Toaster robots are great, and it's not cheating if you want to have sex with them, whatever. I don't want to have sex with Gemma. Don't be disgusting, Katie. I, I built her for you. For me? Yeah. Gemma's a companion for you when I'm away on tour. Pretty sure she's not going to be as chatty when you're not around. And she's built for purpose, if you catch my drift. So if you're feeling lonely, you want to experiment with those fantasies you have about robots? They are not my fantasies. And she can help you around the house with the baby. I'm not letting her anywhere near my daughter. She's a death trap. Besides, her anus is made up of a cigarette lighter. I can't believe you said that. I, I never expected you to perpetrate such stereotypes. I never had you pegged as a robotist. I'm not a robotist. And that isn't a robot. And robotism isn't even a thing. That's just the kind of thing a robotist would say. I'm not a robotist, but dehumanising. That's not a human. I can't believe the bile that's coming out of you today. Can we just go somewhere and talk about this in private, please? Anything we've got to say, we can say in front of Gemma. I'm not worried about saying things in front of a bunch of toasters. Robotist. I'm just sick of her interrupting. Don't you get it, Katie? We've got a super intelligent robot with a computer brain. If we have over an argument, she can play back. We can hear it. Okay, listen like this. Can't we go away and talk about this, just us two? I'm happy to say anything I've got to say in front of Gemma. I hate robots, though, Richard. I think they should all be dismantled. That's nothing like what I said. And Gemma is an objective arbitrator. Any disputes we have, she can settle like that. Uh, Gemma, Katie thinks I should hang my towels up on the radiator after every bath I have, but I think it's OK just to leave them on the floor. Who's right about that? Well, calculating. Richard is 100% correct. Oh, interesting. All right. Richard picks his feet when we're watching television on the sofa. Is that charming or is that disgusting? You don't deserve him, you are so awful. Why are you always criticising him? Oh, shut up, you metal bitch! Right. OK, I don't know what's going on anymore. This isn't funny anymore. This isn't a joke. If this isn't a joke, then I think I need to get you help. Can you leave him alone? I'm going to take Phoebe and stay at my mum's for a bit. I love you, Rich. But if you loved me, you'd support my invention of the toaster robot. You said you were in the marriage vows, essentially. What is this human emotion called love? No, Gemma, we... we can't. As it occurs to me... <laughs> mm. What a lovely combination of chocolate and cheese. That is, I don't think enough, I don't think enough people have tried that. I'm going to open a restaurant chain selling these called Yo Yo Yo's. <laughs> it's the place where you must play with your food. Uh, now, please welcome for this month's poo story, it's TV's Emma Kennedy. This month, uh, I thought it was high time uh, that I told you a poo story that involves me. Uh, this is a first. This is a first for uh, poo stories. So, if you can cast your mind back, uh, I think it was like a couple of winters ago, and I have a beagle, and she had gone out during the night, and she'd done a poo, and in the morning, uh, I woke up and I looked out, and it was very frosty. And I could see the, the little poo that was sitting in the garden. As you can see, that there's, di there's a diagram here of me heading out uh, towards the poo with a little bag in my hand. As you can see, every expense has been spared uh, to bring you these pictures. So I decide that I ought to bend down uh, to pick up the poo. And there's a, a second diagram uh, for that. Now, as I said, it was very frosty and the ground was very hard. And my beagle's poo had sort of separated into sort of almost stone-like, quite hard uh, little nubbins. And as I uh, bent down to, uh, to pick up the poo, one nubbin, one tiny little hard 
dog's poo nubbin fell from my hand. And as it did, it was like a perfect storm because I yawned at the same time. And this happened. <laughs> it bounced. It bounced on the hard floor and into my mouth. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, TV's Emma Kennedy and her poo story. She's amazing there. So, uh, so excuse me, Richard. Yeah, M Matthew Frosby, what is it? I've got quite a funny story about poo myself. Would it be possible for me to...? Oh, I don't know, cos uh, Emma Kennedy's the, the no, poo but... expert, so I don't think you can really... No, I, I, I don't mind Richard Matthews, I guess. I, I think my position as chief poo storyteller is, is pretty safe. So. Oh, well, good. Go, on, oh, go right. ahead, give it a try. Yeah. Um, well, Richard, I want to tell a poo story about a hero. Someone who was wrongly accused of doing a poo. A poo that was never done. And who's been blamed for that poo for over 40 years. And that hero is called Richard Herring. Wait, that, but that's my name. <laughs> Do you remember at primary school when a poo appeared on the floor of the classroom. Yeah, I, I do, Matthew. I blamed the naughty dog for doing it, but it's not true. It wasn't the naughty dog, it was me that did it. So. Mm. No, Richard, that's what everyone wanted you to believe. They drummed it into you that there was no naughty dog, and you'd soiled yourself just to try and keep you down. I, I want to believe you, but I remember, clearly remember my pants being full of poo, so... The naughty dog did that as well. well the, the naughty dog pooed in my pants. It was a very naughty dog. That is very naughty. I'm not... I'm not sure about that. Sounds... Well, I can prove it's true because tonight I can introduce you to someone that you haven't seen since 1973. What? It's the naughty dog. What? That yes. naughty dog? Yes, here he, here he comes. Here, that's it, boy. Oh, here's the, <laughs> the naughty dog. Here he is. Oh. Come on, fella. That's right. There he is. There's the naughty dog. <laughs> you remember when you... Uh, Remember when you trod in that poo? Yeah, that Earlier way. on, that yeah. one just, just over there. There's yeah. still a little remnant of it there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the naughty dog. The naughty dog did that. Uh, oh. It wasn't me. <laughs> I didn't do a poo and then put it on the floor. <laughs> no, no, it was the naughty dog. He, he did it. I thought I made the naughty dog up, so... No, 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 you, you didn't. He's, he's right here. This is, the, mm. this is the real dog. Yeah, the thing is, uh, Matthew, is that, that that naughty dog looks suspiciously... Uh, like the dog that was in Richard's financially disastrous 2014 play, I Killed Rasputin. <laughs> well, it would, be, it would be good if it was that dog from that play, because it would offset the £1,000 it cost to make the dog. Right. But no, <laughs> this is actually the real, the real naughty dog. And he's, he's got a message. And of course, because I played a dog on Animal Antics, I can understand <laughs> the, the message. <laughs> What's that? He's saying it was him who pooed on the floor in the primary school classroom. <laughs> He's also saying it was him who pooed in your pants. It was, mm, it was right. him, he pooed in your pants, Richard Herring. What, what a naughty dog. He's such a naughty dog. He is he naughty. Is such a, he's, wait, there's, there's more. He says there's someone here. That's it, yep, follow your nose, boy. Whoop, oh, hey, easy. Oh. There we go. Oh, he says there's somebody here who was in the room that day in your primary school, in, 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 in St. Emmanuel's, in, in Loughborough. Somebody here. Could it have been Christian? No, I don't think it's Christian. I think it was... It was TV's Emma Kennedy. Is this true, Emma? Yeah, no, of course it's not true. The dog's saying, the dog's saying that you convinced him to do a poo on the floor and then blame it on Richard. That's what he's saying. But it's not true. Well, the dog says differently, so... <laughs> Now I think about it, I didn't poo in my pants that day. It was... I can remember, it must have been the naughty dog. It must be true, Emma. You did this. You must be punished. You're banished from air, Ottawa. Don't do it. She doesn't deserve it now. She's been bad. You're but, banished forever. Get out of it. But I did. You get out. You get out. You've disgraced for what you've done. Hey, don't, you're not allowed to do that. Hey, you're not allowed to do it anymore. Get, no, don't join in with her. She's not in it anymore. Get out. Go, and Matthew's going to do the poo stories from now on. He's well done, Matthew. <laughs> Just like the prediction. <laughs> but the problem is, Matthew, um, now we've got rid of... We need a girl one now for the show. Oh, but really... Barbara can be the, the girl one. Barbara can do yeah, it. Yeah, actually, she's much better than Emma she in every really, single yeah. way. Certainly, right. certainly out of sexual attractiveness. Yeah. There we go. That's oh, proper. Great. Brilliant.
Nice to have you on board, Barbara. Looking forward to your bon mots. It's going to be quite some fun. <laughs> anyway, now it's time for Christian Riley and his topical amusing song. Hooray! <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm going to do a, a song because America's got a new president now, and uh, he's a guy that uh, thinks that climate change is a hoax perpetrated by the Chinese. And so I think America needs a new national anthem, perhaps a song to bring people together, uh, Americans together, in the face of an extreme uh, weather event. So this is, song is called A Song to Bring Americans Together in the Face of Extreme Weather Events. <laughs> Once in a while, someone rains on our parade. Our dreams they try to drown, but it don't change a goddamn thing. We're gonna rally around, we're gonna come back strong, we're gonna stand tall, they're gonna hear our song. Fuck you, clouds, and fuck you. You'll never get us down Cause we're the land of the brave Yeah, we've got towels And we can learn to swim You can take away our freedom But you can't take away our freedom <laughs> Can you feel the eagles soaring? It really hots up in the next verse A bunch of goddamn Muslim clouds Got jealous of our way of life Kidnapped our fluffy white clouds And got them all radicalized And sent them back over here With thunder in their hearts We've got to bomb their training ground It's definitely in Syria or Iran Yeah, fuck you other places With your fucking weird shit Turbans, mosques, and elephant-headed gods What the fuck is up with that? We're gonna get you back For all the evil that you do You can take away Cat Stevens But you can't take away our freedom We got enemies within Trying to tear the country down Talking about climate change They can all eat a flag made of oil Yeah, fuck you, science Fuck you ever dance Your bunch of China loving job haters Need to grow a fucking pair Cause there's a time for kicking ass And there's a time for hugging trees Guess which time we're living in I'll give you a clue It ain't time for hugging trees If it ain't time for hugging trees Which fucking option does that leave? It's time to get together and kill everybody in the world except for Israel. Yes, Jim Riley, ladies and gentlemen. He could just sit there and I think he deserve a round of applause. He's that good. So, uh, I'm, I'm very tired because uh, I, I don't even know, but I've got a, a baby now. And oh, you've got a baby? Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks, Matthew. It's very Sorry. nice of you. I don't really like to talk about it, but she, the clocks went back uh, this month and she doesn't understand time, so she's still waking up what she thinks is the same time. It's five o'clock in the morning every single day, so I'm exhausted. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to have a little sleep now to kind of try and catch up. And while I'm doing that, we'll watch a little bit of the show that I like to call As It Occurred To Me. As it occurred to me, as it occurred to me, as it occurred to me. I was at a gig, it was the interval, and I really needed a wee. Oh, fuck that. Uh, I decided I would beat the system and urinate in the car park, because I'm a bit of a maverick like that. So uh, that's the kind of sneaky guy I am. I just get behind a car and wee there. No one would know any the better. Just get my penis out now and start doing that. Oi! Shit. You're pissing against my car. It was the bouncer. He'd clearly been employed by the venue to stop men urinating in the car park. But I'd literally just passed him. He could have stopped me down there. He was clearly in going for theatrical effect, enjoying the power he had over maverick men who choose that they're too good to use the proper facilities just wee on the floor. I said 
Are you pissing against my car? I should have realised it was extremely unlikely that this was his car. I should have said, is this your car? Wow, what an incredible coincidence. Perhaps you'd like to recite the number plate for me. But I was caught with not quite my pants down, but definitely slightly askew. And so instead I weakly said, well, uh, I hadn't started pissing yet. I wasn't going to piss on it. I was going to piss just behind it. So why are you pissing in the car park? Well, there's a really long queue for the toilet. Well, so what? You're disgusting, you animal. You fucking queue up like everyone else. Pissing in a car park? You're disgusting. He did have a point. It was quite disgusting that I was pissing in the car park. And if everyone did this, it would quickly turn into a fetid and unhygienic quagmire. But it could have stopped me down there. I wouldn't have minded all of this if this had happened. Gooey, gooey. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you weren't thinking about peeing in the car park, were you? I could understand if you were with the queue and all. Yeah, well, yeah I was, actually. <laughs> yes, I, I thought so. Um, Sorry to be a pain, but it's my job to stop people from doing that. Otherwise, it would create fetid and unhygienic quagmire. I, I couldn't have put that better myself. So be a pal and join all the other fellows in the queue, would you? I, I wouldn't mind at all. Sorry about that. <laughs> but because he was being such a dick, I decided I wasn't going to back down. The thing is, I would argue it's not really a car park. It's more some waste ground. None of these people are pissing in the car park. They're all waiting their turn. What makes you so special, you animal? He was playing to the queue now, trying to make me feel humiliated, but I didn't feel humiliated because I was sure there wasn't a person in that queue who'd never weed in a car park. Pissing in a car park? You're disgusting, you muppet. I couldn't work out if he called me a muppet or a mophead there. The, the thing is, I have quite long hair. It looks quite like a mop, but my face also looks like a conglomeration of all the major muppet characters, so... Have you never weed in a car park? No, I haven't, because I'm not an animal. Really? I can't I find that astonishing you've never weed in a car park. Go and join the queue, you muppet. What did you call me? A muppet. I, I still couldn't tell. You animal. Look at it, everyone. Look at it, ladies and gentlemen. It's the not amazing non alfresco weeing man. He's amazing. You're disgusting. Wasn't it Jesus who said, let he was of that wee, wee the first wee? You muppet. What did he say? It was only once I was in the surprisingly fast-moving queue that I realised what could have happened. You're just annoyed because it's your job to stop men weeing in a car park. You're the Muppet or Mophead or whatever it is so you're saying. Ow! <coughs> Oi, are you bleeding on my car? Oh, come off it. What are the chances this is actually your car? <coughs> Shut it, you animal! Oh, my head! My beautiful mop or muppet head. <laughs> As it occurs to me. Matthew, Richard's asleep. Now's your chance. I don't know. Framing someone for making a dog do a poo to get the coveted poo story slot is one thing, but murder. <laughs> Is this a knife or coon which I see before me? <laughs> its handle pointed towards... Well, it doesn't really have a handle, but you've got to get the... Come, let me clutch thee. Oh, oh. I have thee not, yet I see thee still. <laughs> Art thou not cruel vision, sensible to touch as well as sight? Or art thou a knife or coon of the mind? <laughs> a vile creation preceded by the heat oppression of... Oh, no, Israel, actually. Hang on a second. Kill him! Kill him! You shall be king of Ailtima! Kill him! Now to kill Richard Herring. Oh, that's the spoon end. That won't work. Uh, uh, oh, that's the fork. That won't... The knife end. And now, Richard Herring, you die! Matthew Crosby, why? <laughs> Hello, future humans. It is I, Abraham Lincoln. What are you doing here? I'm trying to murder Richard Herring. That is a nice hat. You want to hold the hat? Would you like to hold oh, the hat? Oh, yes, please. Yeah, oh, yeah. there you go. You take the hat! Oh. You've fallen for my trap, Matthew Crosby. Take that! Oh, I don't understand. I thought I could only be killed by someone not of woman born. Well, that's me. I uh, came from a caesarean section. 
Yeah. I, d I didn't know that. Yeah. That's one of the facts about me, Abraham Lincoln. Mm, well, let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's just check Wikipedia. As it occurs to me, Abraham Lincoln was an American politician and a lawyer who served as the 16th president of the United States from March 1861 until his assassination in April 1865. And although he was married, he was secretly gay and Welsh and a woman, and he was born by cesarean section. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you, Abraham Lincoln. Thanks for saving me there. That was nice of you. i do anything for you, Richard. And when I mean anything, I'm including anything sexual. <laughs> I'd like that, Abraham Lincoln, but we can't do that. We're from two different time streams. What? What would the consequences be if we came together? It would be sexy consequences. <laughs> you know I want to, but it's what we do. It would be wrong. We can't do it. But why? Well, I. You owe me. I saved your life. I would love. I'd love it if I could pay you back. I'd love it if I could travel through time and save you. And then that time. What? Comes. What do you mean? Well, you know, obviously the. No. What? What happened? Oh! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Give me that back! I'm going back! Oh, it's <laughs> and now I die. Oh. Blimey, well, that's sad, isn't it, about Matthew Crosby being dead and everything. He was, he was the young one in the. Cr I, I hope Dan Tetzel will be back next week. We'll I locked him in the lift. Oh, that's, oh, that's good. We can let him out. That's, that ties up all the loose ends quite nicely, actually. That's, that's, that's quite good. So next week I'll be back with, uh, as it occurs to me, with me. Christian Riley, Dan Tetzel, and Barbara, the terrifying white supremacist doll. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs>